Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and iOS 17 brings a lot of new features and changes, but I thought we'd go over the top 20 most helpful or useful features. Now, the first thing is one you've probably already seen, but it has multiple functions you may not be aware of. The first one is name drop, bring two phones together that have iOS 17 on them, and you can quickly share a contact with someone else. If you already have that contact, it will pop up just like it did there. Then you can go in and either edit it, change it, delete it, or whatever you'd like to do. However, this same feature has a new feature that allows you to actually airdrop things the same way and then also one other so if we go into photos maybe we'll airdrop a photo this time send it over to the iphone 11 you'll see it quickly airdrops it and now we have today's wallpaper of course linked in the description the other thing you can do is share play much more quickly using the same method. This is something I hadn't seen mentioned elsewhere so if maybe we go in and play a song so let's go ahead and turn the volume down though and we'll go in and play a song here. We'll hit play. And by bringing both devices close together, you can quickly share play. Now this doesn't always work well as this is an earlier beta, but let's bring it together. See if we can get it to share play quickly. And there we have it. It says share play. So we can quickly go right into share play doing the exact same thing. The other user has to accept, and then you can share play your music, your videos and everything else very quickly directly by just bringing devices together. It's just a faster way to do this and a much nicer way to do it. So we'll probably see this expanded to other features as well in the future. One of my favorite features in iOS 17 has to do with phone calls. You can now send them directly to voicemail, or you can actually watch what they're saying in real time. So if I play a call to myself and as I'm receiving the call you'll see the option here to send it directly to voicemail and once we do that we can actually hear in real time it says waiting we'll see in real time that as I speak on this pixel fold it will start to transcript that directly onto voicemail so we'll be able to see that and you can see it start showing up now as I speak, it's transcribing what I say in real time where it's just letting me read it and see if I actually want to accept the call, then I can pick it up and start talking if it's something I'm interested. If it's a spam call, I can just ignore it. So this is a super helpful feature and it works calling from multiple devices, whether that's Android or iPhone. Siri gets some very helpful features where you no longer have to use the word hey in front of it to actually activate Siri. You can also speak back to back requests without saying Siri and the word hey in front of it again so let me show you that siri what's the weather today create a reminder that i have an appointment tomorrow morning at 8 a.m okay i added i have an appointment for tomorrow 8 a.m and you can continue to do this over and over with siri you also have the option now for it to complete and automatically send messages. And while you're doing that, you can stop it while it's sending. So maybe you need this for accessibility. You're sending a message to someone and you need to change it or just stop the message altogether. So if we go ahead and send a message to Siri, send a message to Zach Zolo. This is a test message just to see if this feature works using Siri. change the message. Now I can go back and change this and or just cancel it altogether. So it's super helpful if you need that for accessibility or maybe you're just driving and you want to change things, you can do that while it's sending. It gives you a little bit of a chance for that. Very, very helpful feature. Now, if we've just created those requests and we go over to our widgets, we now have interactive widgets. We can interact with them and maybe complete a reminder, just like I had here, make a YouTube video, it completes, and then you'll see a new reminder here, and then it updates in real time within the widget itself. So they're fully interactive, and Apple has a few of these. With the music widget, we also have control of our home devices, as well as the ability to quickly message someone using iMessage or make a phone call to them within the contacts widget. These are all super helpful updates, especially to widgets if you just wanna quickly see your reminders and then update them that you've completed them. The keyboard has been updated as well, and while it's had autocorrect all along, Apple's improved it depending on the device you have. Also, if you have an iPhone 12 or newer, it actually has fully predictive text for even sentences. So this is a new note. And then if we go down and maybe create a sentence, sometimes it can predict the sentence. So this is an example of a sentence. 
Let's see if it completes it. Sometimes it will show up and start to complete the word and even fill out what you were going to say as far as a full sentence. Tap space and it jumps to the end. We've had some of this in the past, but it's more thorough this time around and will learn over time. So if it sees you're typing something, it recognizes it could complete the sentence. This is similar to what we've seen with Google as well, where it may have a full sentence complete for you. Apple's continuing to work on this and it improves as you use it. Another super helpful feature has to do with passwords. Maybe you have a password that you share within a family often. Maybe you're using Netflix within your home, or maybe you're using Hulu or any of those other services. You can quickly share passwords this time around. If we go into settings, and we go down to passwords within our passwords. If we touch the plus button, we have the option to create a new shared group within this shared group. We can now share passwords and pass keys. It says add trusted contacts, choose what to share and you're in control. The person who creates the group can add or remove others. So you can continue and then set up a password altogether, create a group name and share a set of passwords that maybe you use at your home, whether that's anything from Wi-Fi to different websites that you share video share sharing services and much more. So it's great to have this much, much better than before. Also, speaking of passwords, if you're using two factor authentication a lot, and maybe you're getting that in your messages, it's creating a ton of different messages. And the same is true with mail. It can clean this up automatically. Now, this is one of my favorite new helpful features, and you can activate that by going into settings and within passwords under password options, you now have the option to clean up automatically, automatically delete verification codes in iMessage and mail after inserting with autofill. So if you use autofill, maybe you're logging into a website, it's asking for that two factor authentication code, whether that's from email or within messages, it will auto delete that afterward. Of course, you can disable this if you want to, or you can just go back and recover those deleted messages, but it's a nice option if you want to use it. So I find this to be one of the best options since it typically just sits there after you've authenticated within settings under accessibility. And if we scroll down, depending on the device you have, you'll have an option for personal voice. Personal voice uses AI to create a voice that sounds just like you. So this is for maybe you're losing your voice or you just want it to speak for you and sound similar to how you sound. You can create a personal voice. It takes 150 different phrases to create that voice. And then it processes for quite some time when it's plugged in and then completes. Once it's complete, you can then use that personal voice. You can export export the voice recordings or delete them altogether. But this is not easily replicatable and you can use this now with accessibility settings. So if I triple click my power sleep wake button, we now have the option for live captions or live speech. So if we go into live speech, we can type a phrase and say, hi, this is Aaron. And then take a listen. Let's turn the volume up and try it again. We also have some phrases. Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech. This is a video about accessibility in iOS 17 on YouTube. So it doesn't sound exactly like me, but you can type whatever you'd like. So again, triple click, go to live speech, and then go back to your keyboard and say, hello, how are you today? And then again, press send. Hello, how are you today? So it doesn't get all of your expressions correct, but it's nice to have the voice like that. You of course can create another one to see if it gets it a little bit better. Apple maps gets an update. And I think Apple maps has improved greatly, especially in the United States. It's definitely something you can use regularly and reliably. And if we go into maps, Apple has finally added offline maps. So if we press and hold and just go to offline, you'll see that we already have downloaded South Carolina and Charlotte. And then we can go into those, see the area that we've selected. We can resize this. So maybe we want to make it larger. We can do that and download that whole area. And it shows you the overall size that it will be once you've downloaded it. So as I move this around, it will find all of the information there, which surprises me. It's only 585.6 megabytes for the entire city and surrounding areas. So we tap download. It will download that area and save it to my phone. So in case I lose cellular connectivity, I'll still have a map wherever I am. This is something we've had in other map utilities for quite some time. And you can only use offline maps if you prefer. So maybe you have data limits, you can just enable that and it will work as you want it to. And you can have it changed to download on Wi-Fi only. So really nice options here. I'm glad they finally added this and you'll see it's actually much larger than we thought. 
1.59 gigabytes for the whole state. So it's pretty nice that we have that option. Spotlight search gets updated with a helpful feature, whereas you can search for settings now and not just apps. So maybe we'll search for Bluetooth. We can go directly into Bluetooth, or if you have any shortcuts related to it, they'll just show up here and we can turn it on or off based on our shortcut. So that's something that's super helpful and convenient. And depending on the app you have, if you're searching for an app, I'm not seeing this directly all of the time, but maybe if you were searching for weather and it had some buttons within it, or maybe stocks, sometimes you'll actually see additional options here that you can go into directly just as though it were a widget. So this has been updated dramatically and improved search results as well. Apple has enhanced photos this year with some helpful features as well. This is a photo I took on an iPad from Bon Appetit website of chicken Parmesan. And as you'll see, if I zoom in as though it were on the plate itself, we now have a visual lookup icon. This works for different things such as pets and more, and it recognizes even more this year with food. So if we tap on the icon here, we can look up food and it will give us similar results as to what we're seeing here. So we have different options and how long it takes to make them with different recipes. This has been added and it will recognize more and more as Apple continues to update it. Also, if we pick something up within the photo, have it outline it and let us know, we can look it up the same way. So we have similar options of course, we can create a sticker, but we can look it up just by pressing and holding. It's just a quicker way to get into that. Search results within photos get updated greatly in that they now can find directly in video where something is you're searching for. So I've searched for iOS 17, and if I go into this video and pause it, it will show us exactly where that is. Now we've been able to see where things are before, but it actually will bring us directly to the point in the video where the search results are located. This is something we didn't have before, so it's super helpful. And I think something that most people will benefit from, especially if you're looking for something specific, whether it be words or an individual. Also, if you're trying to get more granular results, pressing and holding the little magnifier has been updated as well to a much larger magnifier. So that's something that's helpful, very minor, but much better if you're trying to search for something or just maybe select some text. With AirPods this year, Apple has updated a few different things that are incredibly helpful. Fast switching is now fast and reliable, where it was supposed to be there before, but now it actually works properly. So if I connect my AirPods Pro 2, place them in my ears, they're connected to my iPad, and maybe I'll play some music over here. So let me go ahead and go into music, we'll press play. Now it's playing in my AirPods. So if I turn it up, you'll see it's playing here. If I go over to my iPhone, it's not playing here, but if I hit play, it will automatically jump to my iPhone in real time, immediately jumping to my music wherever it is. That's something that we didn't have before. It worked, but not well, and you often had to select it. Additionally, there's some new options where you can mute while you're on a call by just pressing the little stem of the AirPods. This can be found in your AirPods settings. So within your settings, if you have the latest beta or you're updated after this is released to the public, you have, of course, your new options for adaptive and things on AirPods Pro 2. But if we scroll down, we have mute and unmute. Press once to mute or unmute or press twice. This is something we didn't have before that's a really nice convenience feature that works on your AirPods. One of the most helpful features I think is the new standby mode. Many people are looking forward to this and asking me questions about it, and it's activated by placing your phone either on a MagSafe compatible stand in landscape, or you can use a lightning connector as well, put your phone in landscape and then lock it. I'll link this stand in the description as many have asked about it, but if we go ahead and place it on the stand, then lock the phone, it'll switch to a standby mode. Now, once it does this, if you have an always on display, it can stay on for quite some time. If you don't, it won't actually go on for very long, but at least you'll see it. And then you can activate it with a tap. Now you have the option for different widgets and much more. So as you can see on the left, we have a similar app to what we have on the watch with Lumi in the middle. So this is actually a test app with, if we press and hold, authorize the phone, you'll see if we go to our widgets, we have an option for whatever we want. And this one is just Lumi where it shows countdown to sunset. We have keep track of the sun information or moon. So we can add whatever we'd like. Then once we've added that, we have the option to show that we have options for lots of different things as so I've been playing around with different ones, but we have the clock and more, but I think I like this one. So we'll select that. We can also customize it this way. If we hit done, then we can customize the right side as well, what we want to see. So if we want to switch between the weather or something else, 
calendar and more, we have that option. Additionally, if we swipe to the right and also Lumi isn't available yet, it's actually in testing, but will be later on as far as the iPhone app goes. If we swipe to the right, we have the option for photos that we may have taken. It can go through albums, people, and more. And then again, if we swipe over, we have the option for just a clock with some basic information. We can go up and down and just have a very basic clock if we want. So this is all fully customizable. And one of my favorite things with this, even though it's very simple, it's very helpful just to put it on a stand at night when you go to bed and have this show up. There are many more helpful features such as having profiles within Safari with personal work or home or whatever you create with your own optional tabs and many, many more. I think iOS 17 is one of the most helpful updates and useful updates in a long time, even though it doesn't have any major features compared to maybe previous versions that were more flashy with redesigns and more. Let me know what your favorite feature is in iOS 17 so far that's helpful for you. And of course, I'll link this wallpaper in the description as I mentioned earlier. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.